Welcome to City League Sports, the show where we give our flowers to those that are part of our great athletic legacy of the Columbus City League. Today, people, you know how it goes. We got another haven in the show today, right? We got Moshami Robinson, former Brookhaven standout on the track and field front. I'm your host, Dr. Vince Clarino, and I'm honored to catch up with one of our legends, right? So let's get into some stories. Hey, say hello to everybody here in Columbus, Ohio. Hello, everyone. It's so good to be with my people. Uh, man, that's hometown. 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 <laughs> I love it. Hey, I, 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 like, a hometown just gives a, like a warm little ring to it, right? Like when you hear it, it's hometown. And you're absolutely correct. Um, you, you, you are, th this is hometown for you, but you are one of Central Ohio's, one of Columbus City League's like just most storied athletes. And and so like, because I can't get all of your body of work into our segment of shows, right? Because you've done so many amazing things, but I want people to be able to hear like kind of like your beginning. And I was doing my homework in preparation for the show. And I come across this story of a seven year old Moshe, right? Like, so, so, so tell me about this seven year old little girl and how she begins this journey of track and field that you're that you're living right now today as a, a, as a woman. So so share everybody that little that little story. I think that's a great segue to get us started. Wow, that's awesome. Um, and forgive me if you hear my dogs, but yes. Um, so I set a goal when I was seven. I was watching Flojo run um, in 1988, Seoul, Korea, and she ran the hundred. And I was sitting in the basement. You know, we have basements in Ohio. That's right. And she won and I ran upstairs and I'll never forget. My mom was cooking. I remember the meal my mom was cooking. She was cooking peas at the time. I said, oh, this. wow. And I said, right. I said, mom, I'm going to win a gold medal for me, you and dad. And mm. I just ran right back downstairs yeah. and went back to watching it. And that was it. That was it. Um, and I remember when I turned nine, my father, I, I did a lot at Cook Recreation. So shout out to Cook Recreation. Oh, OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah certainly. Recreation. Yeah. So, you know, I was supposed to be going to a dance class there. Mm. And my dad took me to a track meet, which was the Hershey National Qualifying Track Meet. Oh, OK. But we didn't know all that. He was just taking me. I get second in the 50 meter dash and qualify. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to make sure I'm understanding this. You all went to this qualifying meet and you participated at nine years old. Oh, wow. Okay. Qualify, because this was my dad's plan, because yeah. he, he had seen me run when I was five at a family reunion. That's what he told my mom. So that's why we okay. came by. He, could, he went to go prove I was fast. So I go get second in the 50 meter dash qualify we come back with this little paper talking about i qualified for the hershey's nationals and my mom's like we can't afford to go to hershey pennsylvania wow <laughs> you're just supposed to take a motion to attract me and after that i didn't run track anymore i you know went ahead continued being a kid playing regular sports and the first actual organized sport i competed in was basketball would take abc Okay. And yep. Coach Sam Brown, right? So yep. just shout out to Columbus for all the things that we have set up for young people at the time, you know. Nice. And in seventh grade at Monroe Middle was when I actually joined a track team. Okay. So that okay. was really where my career began in track and field was at Monroe Middle School. I was wondering After which middle school grade, you went to. Yeah, Monroe. Um, yeah. One of the best, you know, uh, very, very traditional, very guided, very mm -hmm. um Structured. And yeah. that's so important. It was so critical at that time. And I just remember Mr. Walters and Mr. Taylor, Mr. Ruffin, all of the people who were integral parts of discipline, encouragement, um, all of my teachers there, Miss Coleman. It matters the type yeah. of education system we have, the type of the, the room and space that teachers are allowed to really pour into young people and become personable um, and share and edify them in ways that, you know, it's just not a part of the content. And I'm so glad that I had those teachers in my life. So that's where my journey started. Yeah, hey, that, that's nice. And, and it's interesting because you threw out some names I didn't have in my notes. Um, mm. Ralph Taylor, like you said, principal at Monroe, uh, Milt Ruffin, Dr. Milt Ruffin now, right? Who's, yes. who, who's the who's the leader at, at, at Columbus Fort Hayes right now? Yes, he and, is. Um, it's interesting to hear those names because you instantly took it to a space of academia and all of the wonderful things that that that, that shape you and help you, you know, along your journey. So you start in, in, in Monroe, you're running track, you're figuring it out, you're, you're and you're like blazing the trail, and then and then like somehow, right, 
for whatever reason, you, whether you live on that side of the city or I'm not sure, but you but you end up at Brookhaven and athletics at Brookhaven at that time was like, you know, you walk the hallways and everywhere you turned, a classmate was a student athlete doing really special things. So 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 just kind of share with us entering into that space and 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 what it meant per se for you to be at Brookhaven. And then we'll start to like run down all your amazing accolades, right? So, you know, I went to Columbus Alternative High School okay. um, for, for okay. my high school. So, yeah, yep. that's how I ended up. Brookhaven was my home school at the time. Mm. And so, therefore, um, I had to choose to do my sports there. Yep. So, I actually traveled. I left seventh period from cause going over to Brookhaven. And I started with basketball at Brookhaven. And that led on to um, us. Pretty much the basketball team became the track team. Yeah. Um, but. Yeah. Coach Lee and Coach Rob, um, mm-hmm. Coach Robinson, yeah. they were in a very integral part of my entire career. Um, I, I can't say enough about the discipline and the structure and the standard of excellence that was held at Cause, Brookhaven, Monroe, and all of the adults that came into my atmosphere. No one accepted me being less than my best. And mm. it started in academics. You know, when we spoke about Dr. Ruffin, um, I was the first chair flute and I moved from third chair to first chair. But it was the way that he imparted being excellent. If I was going to play nice. the flute, be great at it. Yeah. And so I went from being third chair in seventh grade to first chair in eighth grade. But it was it was those moments. And so, you know, coming from Cause of Brookhaven, I had the beautiful dynamic of two schools mm-hmm. um, of supporting of a supporting cast. And it was just I couldn't have had a better opportunity in Brookhaven High School, Brookhaven University. Um, yeah, yeah. The level of standard of excellence that ran through the hallways, the understanding. Um, Coach Howard, I, I just think of all the amazing adults mm-hmm. that crossed my path that gave me an encouraging word, did not make it easy, um, didn't did not lower my standard. Um, and I just appreciate that on so many levels. And you know, I'm thankful and grateful for Brookhaven and the love, but I'm even more grateful that I had to I had an opportunity to experience both Columbus Alternative High School and Brookhaven and see those two dynamics come together because that best set me up to be able to handle the load at the University of Texas for sure. Certainly. And and, and we're gonna get to, to your time at UT, right? Like like you 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 shared so much in that one sound bite, right? Like there's so many things there. And and I think what was kind of like amazing. You, you speak to how um, an experience in, in a non-athletic space, right, playing, playing an instrument and how and how moving along that paradigm and, and being a part of, of a group of, you know what I mean? So you go from third chair to first chair, right? And that, and that growth that you have to have, you, you speak of these different individuals and, and, you've, and you've said some names of some phenomenal people. Like, I don't know that we've had a show yet where uh, – where Coach Howard hasn't come up, right? That's a special dude, and 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 like 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 we could go on about Coach Howard, but Coach Rob and Coach Lee, them is special. Like Coach Rob is my guy; he's running around here in Central Ohio still, and he's helping guide young people. Um, I, I encourage everyone if you come across Holly Robinson and, and you can get a forty-five second conversation with that guy, you will walk away with so many little life nuggets. You, you, you'll be inspired. You know what I mean? Like, and, and so it's interesting because you, you made this little comment about basketball and track. And I remember playing when I was in college and I had a coach who said, I don't want a basketball team. I want a track team that plays basketball. So there's okay. lots of running, right? You know what I mean? There's lots of running. But, but I want to know, so, 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 so we're going to focus on your track and, 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 you, and you run in middle school. You, you, you got a dad who plants this seed and a nine-year-old daughter one day just riding in the car. You know what I mean? Like, like, it, like, like, like nine-year-olds are still riding in the back seat, right? So you're like in the back seat. You're probably just like loving life. And you're and this is before cell phones, right? So you're just looking out the window and just watching whatever's going by. And then you pull up somewhere and he's like, okay, go in there and run, right? Like, so, so, so you got this dad who plants this amazing seed for you. But, but the 400 meter ends up becoming your race. And, and I'm curious to find out, and I, and I want our listeners to know, how, how do you end up in the 400? Coach Holly Robinson. Oh, Coach Rob gets Period. the credit. Okay, love it. <laughs> t- t- tell me about that conversation because you got to be Holly tough. Coach Robinson. Yeah, t- um, tell us about that. So my freshman year, I was running the 100, 200, 4x1, 4x4, and I had the likes of Helen Darlin on my track team. Mm-hmm. You know, they were seniors. We had Helen right? on so, the show. Yeah, Helen was on the show. So listen, imagine the type of standard that they set right. because that's when we won a state championship. You know, right. they were the varsity team. So when it came to being a, a freshman on JV and then transitioning to see them um, 
outdoor or track and field, the level of respect and just love that they showed me competing really helped me rise to the occasion, you know, understand that this is an opportunity to go be great at it, you know, have a good time and do well. And so my freshman year, we accomplished a lot, but it was Coach Robinson who was like, you know, you be doing, you, you do well in the 400. He wow. told me I could win states in the 400. Mm. That's what he told me. And I'm thinking to myself, I don't want to go all the way around. I don't mm-hmm. know. I don't know. And so my sophomore year, we jumped in the 400. And I can tell you what I remember. I remember this workout in particular because I use it when I speak to my athletes. I use it when I speak to executive boards. Um, I remember we were doing a workout. It was just myself, Coach Lee and Coach Rob, because I was the only one who had qualified for states. And I was one of the one, two, and the four. And mind you, Brookhaven finished eighth overall at states. Right. Okay. (laughs) But we had a 400 workout. I had 10 400s with 70 seconds, with one minute's rest. So I had to run them in 70 seconds with one minute's rest. I'm 16. Um, I remember I was on my cycle. I'm on number seven. I right. finished okay. running number seven. And I was always agreeable. I was always an athlete that worked hard. So you didn't have to get me going. Yeah, but this beautiful. was the day that I had had it. You know, I didn't have any fringe training since regionals. All my yep. friends were gone. It was just me and my it was seemingly old men coaches, yeah. right? And they were very much younger. Who are you telling? Hey, hey, you, you, they, 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 when, when you're when you're young, you when have such young. you have such a lopsided scale of what old is, of, right? Of age and time. Yeah, yeah. Because you're like um, you like you, you see somebody who's thirty, and you're like you're old, and, I, and like and they seem yeah. like so old. Right? Yeah, exactly. I'm like I got these old coaches with me. That's right. They don't understand where I'm coming from at sixteen. Right. And so I just remember I said I stopped after the uh, seven. When I said I can't do this anymore, Coach Rob. So it's too hard. I can't do this anymore. He said, Moshe. He said, the things that you want to accomplish is like a mountain peak. How much room is there on top of a mountain peak? Mm. How many people can fit up there? And I thought about what he said, and I said, not many. He said, just one. He said, on your journey and what you want to do in life, you're on a mountain, and everybody can't go to the top. But when you get to that mountain peak, he told me that the work that I do on the way would bless those lives. But the mountain peak was for me mm. and it was going to be lonely. But to stand up there because it is the greatest spot and those that have come along the way will be blessed. I'll never forget that. It was very powerful because he helped me understand that sometimes when we not sometimes when we set out to reach some of the greatest things that we want in life when we push past that fear of not accomplishing it. That's when we do see and realize our greatest capacities, which others see that and become inspired to reach for theirs. So we can't want to go on that road with a lot of people because the higher you climb up a mountain, the altitude changes, your Mm -hmm. breathing gets different, and you can't carry a lot of baggage. But if you're doing the work along the way, those who don't get to climb up the mountain, they're cheering you on and they're good where they're at and they're getting the blessings. See, when the snow falls, it doesn't just fall on the mountain peak. It falls on the entire mountain. So all the blessings rain down, but you got to be willing to push. You got to know to go and you got to know that that mountain peak is for you. And although the road seems lonely, it's about all the lessons and yes, that journey indeed. that you're supposed to get. So that people can be inspired to go after their mountain peak, and I, Coach Rob, that is what hey gave that me that 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 story right there. You and Coach Robinson, and y'all are not related, right? For for the nope. listeners, right? So nope. so 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 you and Coach Rob, like y'all can take that story on the road. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like that is a powerful piece. Um, you know, and and, and to and to think that you know sometimes um, sometimes our best messages that we share with others comes in these moments of adversity, right? These challenging situations. Because who knows if Coach Rob shares that inspirational energy with you if you just finished the eighth one and don't even and don't even say anything or how, whatever the number was. You stopped on seven, you had to do eight, right? right so like right. so like imagine if you just run number eight, like 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 that was the goal for the day, and you get through the right. last one and you just go to the locker room and get your stuff and go home. Like like maybe that message never happens but you have Mm. this challenging adversity moment right and then that moment inspires a a a teacher to say hey look i believe in you and let me give you the let me give you the inspiration so that you can believe in yourself you know what i mean like 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 that's it and so a lot of times so 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 here let me do a little side piece coaches when you see a young person who who's who's having a challenge 
That's not the time when you tuck and turn on them. That's the time mm-hmm. when you dig into your bag of tricks and you come up with the most um, inspirational energy you can find to help them achieve because then they w- turn up one day and they're sitting here with gold medals and stuff, right? So so, so that's kind of where you have to take that energy. Coaches, you need to yes. understand that. Yes. And so, so, okay, now, here, now here's where we get into the, a little bit of the fun. While at Brookhaven, you run the 400, Coach Rob inspires you. Which, which you got to be a bad person to inspire a kid to run the 400, right? Because that's a, that's, a, that's a tough race. I, I say that every time we got track athlete, you know what I mean? Like, you got to be tough to run the 400. And so uh, your 10th grade year, you finished third in the state. And then you bounced back junior and senior year with back-to-back first-place state championships in the 400. And so the reason why I share it is because I didn't know anything about the Monroe, the musical instrument, third seat to first seat. But but how beautiful mm-hmm. it, how beautiful the connection that you go from a third seat and and, and playing in the in, in you know what I mean and and playing your instrument to achieving in, in the practice and the hard work that goes to obtaining first seat. And then here you are, tenth grader, you finish third in the state, you come back back to back first place finishes. So wh- so while you're doing this. Tell me the ten, tell me like the tenth grade third place finish, and then what happens where you say, "Not nah, I'm like I'm claiming what's mine." T- 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 tell us a little bit about that. So, because so, you go out and win the state back to back in the four hundred. Yeah, you know, I, I I love that you said it that way. Um, that's really the first time I had I heard that back that way, and I think I guess it would go back to that being in the third chair, understanding when someone sees more in you. And someone believes in the goals that you set. How can you not see more in yourself? Mm. You know, they were so coach Rob and coach Lee and my teammates were so inspiring um, and were cheering me on. And so third wasn't enough. And that was the year that Brookhaven, that we won the state championship Mm -hmm. with five girls in 1998. And I think that for me, to be honest, the personal part of me was that Tia Trent, wore these bells on her shoes. Oh, did she? <laughs> a good okay. Friend of mine. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She um, is a Columbus kid, yeah. a Central Ohio kid. Uh, uh-huh, I think she was uh-huh. at one of the Westervilles. She was. Yeah. And it, when I jumped in the 400 my sophomore year, they told me about this girl who wore the bells. Okay. And I okay. remember hearing them. And I remember those bells passing me mm. um, in the state meet. And I remember losing to those bells my sophomore year. Okay. And I, it was my junior year that I was determined that those bells were going to be behind me. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. And, 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 and your junior year, which was her senior year, uh-huh. I think I think you finished first and she finished second. Yes. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. Yes, indeed. That hey, those bells were going to be behind that's me. That's <laughs> right. As good friends, I bet you all get to have a good smile about that. I, yes, I, I, would, I would beg to guess that now, like at, at all levels of track, you probably can't even do something like that. You, you probably can't put bells on your shoes anymore, can you? Or is that still something that's even permissible? You know, by the time you reach the pros, you know, you can do those bells and whistles. Mm. But at that level, everybody's so ready. If that's a distractor, the latest, we weren't ready to begin with. So right. you're, you're, you're ready to go at the next level, you mm. know. And I think that, you know, that is something T and I have talked about since. Um, yeah. Because it was inspiring. And I think that she felt good that that was what I used, you know, and that's when, you know, you have a true competitor. That's when you can really appreciate growing up in a city and in a space where we were all celebrated. Mm -hmm. I I tell so many young people that, you know, and I and I live in Central Florida now and I was coaching schools. And I tell them the thing that I admire the most about growing up in the city of Columbus is that we all cheered for each other. Mm -hmm. Even though we were competitors, even though there were rivalries, there was something that collectively we understood about each other in the city of Columbus and what we were able to accomplish, what we could do if we set our goals. And, you know, I don't often see that. And so I always am often applauding Columbus City Schools, applauding the coaches, the school district that kind of somewhat insulated us in this safety space of of being seen and heard at that time because it resonated across the board, um, across sports, across athletics you know schools and i appreciated that on so many levels because by the time we got to the state meet it was central ohio against everybody else and we were the best yeah (laughs) well you know if you go back and look 
in like that stretch in the 90s and early 2000s, you look at track and you look at the finishers. It's like, mm-hmm. it, like, like, th- like there was one year where it's like, you know, you look at the hundred in, on the female side and of the eight runners, I want to say like four of them were Columbus City. It was like a young lady exactly. from West. It was like somebody from Brookhaven, somebody from, you know what I mean? Like you look and then you throw in like a Western, you throw in a Tia and somebody else. Yes. And then before you know it, the whole field is Central Ohio. Um, and, 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 and to a degree, like, like, like we're, st- we're still producing that high, that high level of, of young people. And, and there's so, but there's so many additional distractions. And before we kind of maybe even get into some of that, I, I, I want to share. So, so before we like move on and get to the University of Texas, with with your story, you you become so like when you come in as a freshman sophomore, you see Helen, and then when you become a senior, you got a young lady named Kalila Carpenter who's seeing you right, and so um just in general seeing Kalila come in like 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 what's your memories of Kalila because she was been like a year or two younger than you is that right? Yes. Yeah. So Kalila and I, we ran on the uh, summer track team. So mm. my friends pulled me into the Jaguars, which was Coach Robinson's summer track team. It worked okay. out Yeah. because um, I wasn't immersed into track like that. It was just something that I did. I was all, all academics girl. Oh, wow. So when okay. I ran summer track, I was like, OK, this is cool. I get to be around more kids who yeah. like running track. Right. This is fun. So that's where I came into encounter Kalila. And I was just like, this girl has to come to the school I'm going to run at. Yeah. Like I want to run with the best. Where does she go? Right, you know, and right. so she comes to Brookhaven. We team up, and you know her jovial, new spirit. Being a junior for me when she was a freshman, it was that it was like watching me all over again. Excited, right. yeah. So it was igniting, and it was you know it was fascinating. And then by the time I was a senior, you know we both discovered a lot of accolades. I think that that was a time for me and Kalila that we both went through a lot of growing Mm. in terms of being competitors, being the best, sharing that space and keeping our teammates, you know, connected um, with that as a team. You know, I was I was leaving and I'm older. Mm -hmm. Um, She's a sophomore and she's staying. And so like the balance of the synergy and how we connected um, was so important and so critical. For young girls at that time, but I think that we navigated that space um, a lot better than many are today. In hundred percent, right? Because typically, you you would yeah. I mean, like 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 you would, and and I think you shared that um, so poetically because you you like like in 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 all levels of sports, you can look at the pros. You 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 know you you can look at um, college. You can look at high school, and 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 there's often a challenge. And 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 someone else's star shining, right? Mm. And 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 one of the one of the examples that I give with coaches and the analogy that I use with coaches and young people all the time is that when you look into the sky, you can see a lot of stars, and your star doesn't have to shine brighter than my star for both of the stars to shine. Like all okay. the stars in the sky can shine. You know what I mean? <laughs> your, your star can shine and my star can shine. We both can have st- stars that shine. Like my star doesn't have to be dim for yours to be bright and seen. We can look into the sky and see all the stars. And so for you to sit here, because you both were high in on top of your game. You know what I mean? Like 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 you, as young women. And so um, she comes in and, and, and obviously carries along uh, the torch that you set at Brookhaven along with those that said it before you. And so you all are doing these amazing things. And so now you're a senior, you're a Columbus, Ohio, Central Ohio kid, like you shared, Monroe, Brookhaven, Kaz, this, you, you're a Midwest kid. And then somehow you end up in Texas. So like, so like give everybody a little, get, 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 give us this like, like and, 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 and do it all, to, like you can share it all together. How do you end up yeah. choosing Texas? And then let's just talk about Texas track. Yeah. Um, so I can a couple quick things. One of the main things was there was a meet my senior year in Chillicothe. So just so we can think about it for meet directors, I'll never forget. It was an invitational. It started snowing and mm. it was April. And I remember it was a 200 and the meet official said you can keep on one item. So he was like either the long sleeve shirt or the yeah, pants. Right. And I said, well, I need my legs. So I'm going right. to keep on my pants. Yeah. But it was when the snowflakes fell on my arm. And I realized that we don't stop track meets for snow. But right. I said, okay, I may have to go because right. I don't like the cold like yeah. that. You know, I yes, want to run where it's warm. Okay. And so, you know, as much as I love the Big 12, as much as I love the Ohio State, grew up, you know, around the Buckeyes. And and, and, and the Buckeyes still at heart, you know, I yeah. believe aren't orange, but I grew up in it. So it was very hard to tell Candy Young, 
that I wasn't going to be coming there. And right. okay. she was the reason I wanted to come. Russ Rogers was amazing, but it was the weather. And so when I went on these recruiting trips, I'll, I'll be honest with you guys, it came down to UCLA and Texas. Um, okay. And I just knew I was going to UCLA. Where's, you know, that's where's where, Texas at? That's in Austin? Austin. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. And you got to think about UCLA, like Flojo train there. You had yeah. John Kersey, Bobby, like, and so them wanting me, I'm like, this is a super dream come true. Right. How can I not do this? Um, and so when I was got recruited by Texas, um, I discovered that um, the head coach at the time, Beverly Kearney, was actually um, the biological aunt of my biological brother that I had yet to meet. He's, mm. uh, we have this. We share the same biological father, right? Okay. So that was an interesting in-home visit. Yeah, that was actually my in-home visit was actually the first time I talked to him. Um, and this was discovered when she was just asking my parents where they were from. And right. Just so, just imagine that moment. There were a lot of tears. A Who lot are of you everything. telling? Right. That that's that. I'm that, overwhelmed. That's, that's, that's yes, indeed. Right? Who are you telling? I was like, what's happening here? Like, I'm wait, overwhelmed what? for you hearing the story right now, right? and I'm and I'm and I'm not even connected to the family. So like, just like, cause that's a whole strain in of itself, but, um, to get down to how I chose it, obviously I went out to visit, I met my brother, she flew my brother in and I met my brother on that visit. So I can tell you my visit was a little overwhelming cause it was yeah. more about for me meeting my brother than looking at what kind of school this was. Right. I was like, I've been looking for him. Um, yeah. and so when it came to me making a decision, I remember we had a signing day and it was a Wednesday before that signing day. I still did not know where I was going. Mm. And Ebony, Ebony Pugh was was signing to UMass. Okay. She's on our basketball team. And Philip Dupree. Yeah. He was going to Fordham. I remember it was the three of us. Yeah. Was our Phil Dupree. Day. I remember Phil because um, Phil was Phil was coming to the Atlantic 10. I know Fordham because I, cause I right. played in the Atlantic 10. Yeah. OK. In New, so, in yeah, New York. So yeah. I, I mean, I've had some amazing people surrounding me. Um, but I remember it was a Wednesday and because I went to cause, we did these internships every Wednesday mm -hmm. and this was my second year doing my internship at Merrill Lynch. Cause I thought I was going to do international stock yeah, so I get it. 17 yes, year indeed. Old emerging. That's, a, di that's a different mindset in itself right there. You, totally. were, you know what I mean? Yes, indeed. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. So one of my advisors, he brings me in his office and he asks me, he said, Hey, you know, where are you going to go? I was like, Tom, I have no idea. His name is Tom Polari. I tell this story all the time. Yeah. Because I have no idea where I'm going to go. I said, I, I said, it's between Texas and UCLA, but I don't know. And I have to decide by Friday. And I literally did not know. I had cried all week. It was so difficult. So Tom says, well, let's just flip a coin. Okay. I'm thinking to myself, I cannot flip a coin about this life decision. But right. Okay. Right. I'm going to go with what Tom is talking about. Yeah. So he takes this quarter out. He said, choose a side, you know, make one school one and then make the other school the other. And I'm going to toss it up. He said, you know, your sides, I, I say, I, I affirm that I do. He tosses the quarter in the air and he catches it. And he says, so what school are you going to? And I'm like, turn it over. I don't know. We're both about to find out. Right. Tom says, no. He said, there's a side that you want this to be more than the other. Which one is it? I said, heads. He said, what school is heads? I said, Texas. He said, that's where you go. <laughs> hold, on, where you go. hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> that's where I went. That was it. I, 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 I joke around on our show a lot. And I, and I, and I talk about the possibility of you can have tears of winning. Who, who's this? Who's this counselor that did this? Who's this guy's his, name? His name is Tom Pulary. Tom Pulary. He worked as an advisor at Merrill Lynch. Oh, oh, no. So he, so he's working. This is, this is a Merrill Lynch advisor that you had. Not, 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 I'm not a school system person. No. Somebody working in. Hey, yeah. man, that is a beautiful, I, as a, Number one, I'm about to use that for the next like 20 times. I got a kid talking to me. I'm pulling out quarters. Like now, everywhere I go, I'm gonna have quarters in my pocket because that yeah. is powerful right there. That guy, Beyond. you know what I mean? That that is a beautiful story. I, I love the fact that um, because because you think that the decision is so trivial, and and you think that like 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 that you can actually make it with the with, with the flip of a coin. But in actuality, your spirit and your it has mm. already made the decision. The flip of the yes. coin was irrelevant, right? Because that outcome wasn't going to be what you needed and wanted in your life. And so, wow, you know what I mean? Like um, that that's that's a good one right there. I, I love hearing that for you. And so Texas yes. then becomes home for you through through this transition, through this life process. And and I'm sure that there were other um, influences in your life, whether it's, you know, mom and dad or, or, or family that are along the way, like helping plant these seeds. Sometimes seeds get planted and you don't even know that they're happening. Right. And, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and I like, and I use kind of for me, like the energy of nature's seeds, 
right? So, so, so there's like the seeds that you plant as a person when you go out in your garden and you dig up soil and you plant seeds, right? But then there's also these seeds that when like when you look around, you go, I didn't plant any flowers over there. <laughs> and, fly, and, sometimes, and sometimes nature plants a seed for you. Come you know on. what I mean? Just Absolutely. through its process, whether it's a Absolutely. bird, whether it's an animal, whether it's a this, whether it's the wind blowing. Sometimes nature plants a seed for you. And so um, you, you, you have you, we all get these seeds that get planted um, on purpose for us, you know, with the decisions that we make. And then also some get planted that we don't even know through your interactions, mm. throughout your daily life. Right. These seeds get planted. And so. Um, Sticking with the theme, though, you you get to Texas, and and, and I want to be able to like give the next like you know what I mean several minutes here enough time for us to to like capture two, two, two you know two two parts of it, even though even though they need more time in in their own. So you, you you're, you're like 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 hey look we're we're, we're like running the four hundred right and 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 the first and the first leg is Monroe right the the, mm. the, 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 the second leg is Brookhaven. Right. And then now here we are on the third leg and we're at Texas. It. Right. And so 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 we're, we're, we're on the bend still. We're at Texas and we're running around the curve. And so um, while at Texas, you all win a 2000 indoor, a 2003 indoor, a 2003 outdoor. And you're running the 400 singles and you're running the four by four. So just give us all, you know, what I mean, like 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 one of your favorite Texas type of memories or moments that, 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 that you that you are comfortable with sharing because we can't talk about all of them on, on the show today. Right. So, so give me one of your favorites. Man, there are so many. Um, and I was definitely the athlete. I ran the two, the four, the four by one, the mm. four by four. That was my mm. schedule. Um, Texas got the butter out the duct <laughs> yeah. for sure. Certainly. Um, and I guess there were so many memorable moments. And what I learned is that the competition part of it mm. wasn't the biggest takeaways. Okay. It was absolutely the growth, the team building, learning how to decrease me and increase for my team. Oh, wow. And when I, when I, I say that when I, when I say this, I, I mean that it didn't matter what almost Shami could do. If I couldn't do that, within the guise of a team and honor one, when I first got there, those that came before me, because coaches are going to highlight, put in place their best or where they think is their best. Um, and so I remember a critical time that my coach switched out myself from the third leg of the four by four with the senior who had been running anchor because I was producing a faster leg and I had her go back. You know, I told her that I was comfortable where I was at there because that's where I felt I belonged at the time. Mm. No matter whether or not I was faster than Tanya Jarrett, according to what our coach thought, it right. was the spirit and the work ethic and the discipline and the earning that she in her senior year had done that was really the leadership of the four by four that right. really inspired me. Yeah. And I couldn't run well behind, you know, behind yeah. that. I mm. ran well giving it to her. Nice. You know, and so that was one of the that was a powerful time in my freshman year um, of a few meets where I had like I said, I had to decrease me yeah. in order to increase my inner self to, to understand how we all work together in that you know, that meant, you know, just sharing with my coach, you know, I might have said maybe I was afraid so she can go ahead and make the change. But right. on the inside, I knew it was yeah. about the fact that Tanya inspired me. Right. I, I was inspired giving her the baton. Nice. Taking the baton from her didn't Would've work been for different. me. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. you, you know, and, and I share this. I think that track relays are probably the best team sport mm. out, out of every sport. Because it, it is the only sport that requires every participant for, for that particular player moment where everyone has to do their job, right? And, and, and in order to have a success, team success on a relay, you know, exchange from like, like, like who's ever running first has to have a great start. Exchange from one to two has to have a great yeah. exchange because if you drop the baton, it's over for everybody. You know what right. I mean? Ex exchange from two to three has to be great. Th three to four has to be great, and then the anchor has to finish strong. Like like everyone has to do their part. And in other sports, 
like like there's plays where somebody can kind of take a play off, right? Whether it's football, mm-hmm. basketball, whatever you, you like. Like I don't have to be yeah. on every play, right? But I think relays are, are are that, and you shared that 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 that's powerful to say. Like um, you understood that um, th- there there's more to how to make this work than just the pure raw talent. Uh, you know what yes. I mean? Like 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 because the dynamics of a team don't always have to just fall just strictly on that piece of it right and so right. um that right. that that that, that 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 speaks to, uh, to a level That's of maturity good. and wisdom you know what i mean courage before before your time right so mm. so 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 you have these great moments at, at at UT you're in Austin and and you and you have this space where you grow up and, and then like you 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 decide to continue in the space of track and field right on on on, on that like that like that professional peace for a while and then we're just going to kind of like dive right to it so you get to an opportunity where 2004 and then I'm just going to let you take 2004 and share it. so 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 now we're on the last leg of it right you tell me what what goes on in 2004 so you know on the last leg um or the last part of 8400 you mm-hmm. really have to activate yourself because that last 100 is the hardest yeah. part right right um and so I'm going to say that that was that was hard. Um, that was different. I had another semester of college that mm. fall of 2003. So I had to go back to Texas and finish. And yeah. my eligibility was up. And I also knew that although I had a great running with my coaching time at Texas, that I was going to need to transition to go to the next level. And I had not won my Olympic gold medal. And that's what I was set out to do. Right. You know, I don't think my eyes were so set on being a professional athlete, because I can tell you, I was surprised what came after the medal in terms of the um, profession, Mm. but making the decision, going back into that semester, understanding that I now need to change. I connected with one of the men's coaches, Dan Papp, who I adore and I honor. Um, And he was the male's um, field events coach. She's a jumps coach. And I just told him, I said, Dan, I'm not going to stay with Bev, but I still need to train to get ready for trials because I'm going to Olympic trials and I'm going to make this team. Right. I just thought I'm going to win a gold mm, medal. Yeah, you know, that, was, that was it. Yeah. Um, and so we, we, he gave me workouts. I did a lot of the workouts on my own. Nice. Um, and when it came time, you know, he invited me to actually train with Marion Jones because he was going to be moving to North Carolina. Go figure. Um, October 10th um, of 2003. I remember so vividly. It was the same day I had just left Bev's house, letting her know that I was going to, you know, decide to do something different. There's there's a conversation that needs to be had. You know, you have to honor where you've been and and have that real conversations for for completeness. You know, you never go into something new without finishing something else. Yeah. And it was driving away from her house. Marion Jones called me. Like sometimes I watch my life like a movie because the stuff Who that you happens tell is like. Hey, and and pa- pause for one second. Let me. Do, have, have you written a book? And I'm being serious. Have, have you written any books? I'm going to. Okay, so let me and, say this. I don't know sir. if there if there's a ghost writer out there listening. Mm. Somebody needs to get in touch with this young lady here because mm. your story sounds and it's it's just like it's so poetic and beautiful and inspiring and there are all these nice little nuggets and moments and you share them so well i don't know i don't know if you like sit around and just rehearse this stuff but you share these moments so well you know what i mean and um somebody needs to find you and start getting this scripted out because i received I, that yeah so some, somebody yeah book, yeah but, but, but it's so it's, yeah. it's my lived experience so when you're telling it like when you've lived it, mm-hmm. you're really telling your feelings. Yeah. So imagine, imagine getting a phone call after leaving your coach. Right. That was difficult. I cried. I wasn't no going. doubt. And then you're halfway down the highway, and Marion Jones, the lady who you have magazine covers, at, right, calls right, your right. cell phone, right, right from you, and yeah. she invites you to come train with her. Yeah. Yeah. No. Like 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 those things are that. <laughs> hey, that that is beautiful and powerful. Um, so, somebody needs to just come and, uh, you know, sit in your room with you and, and pl- plus a tape recorder and let and let you just rattle these things off like, like we're sharing here today. And they need to start to write and tell your story. And, and well, so, I tell you. No, please. It goes. Yeah. I, I So she calls. So we make a decision mm-hmm. with my family that we're going to be I'm going to be moving to Cary, North Carolina. Okay. So when Thanksgiving break came, we came, we went there. Got my apartment set up, signed the lease to start in December when school got out. Yeah. I graduate December 7th, go to graduation. My parents come. I had two graduations and 
it's December 7th. Everything's packed up. My dad has rented a pickup truck with the detachable U-Haul. Yeah. Me and my mom are in my Dodge Neon, and we drive 24 hours straight from Austin, Texas, to Cary, North Carolina. Wow. And shout out to my dad, who didn't have anyone helping him drive. Who my you mother and I, we, we yes, helped. Indeed. Yeah. Right? He had the radio. Um, he had the radio and yeah. coffee. <laughs> Listen, you know what? Now I think about it. I think my dad, because I had mom with me. Yeah. Dad was able to do his thing. No in the doubt. Truck. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Like, and so we get there. I set up and you, you know where I met the group in the Cayman Islands because mm. Marion Jones had set up with Dan Path for them to do their speed training for the entire month of January 2004 in the Cayman Islands. And, you know, I had asked God, I said, God, I need a little break from college. I did not know that I was going to get to live in a hotel for a month and train on the island of Cayman yeah. with Marion Jones and my team. We're right. talking about Kareem Street Thompson. I mean, Kareem Street Thompson, Obadelli Thompson, uh, Anson Henry, Jason Smith, some of the best, Tim Montgomery, Certainly. some of the best. Um, and then there's me and Marion. Right. And me, Mary and I garnered this relationship that transcended anything on a track. Wow. She's one of the most beautiful humble spirits that I ever met given the position that the world put her in. That's why yeah. I am a person who's a firm believer, never judge a book by its cover Certainly. because people place us in certain platforms and positions that we don't necessarily ask for, yeah. but we play those roles because it's expected. So when I got to know the Marion Jones, that's the woman, that's the mother, that's the friend. Oh my gosh. You would have thought that we grew up in Belize together. Right. And it was the most amazing thing. So imagine when I go to make the world team um, in indoor and um, I decide that I need to leave this group because I'm not going to be able to excel like I think I should right. to make the team and get a gold medal. Because no matter what, that's my goal. Right. So in March of 2004, I parted ways with Marion and Dan um, and only because the needs of the group were so much and me being a 400 meter runner and then mostly being 100 meter sprinters, everybody deserved to get what they need. And I couldn't ask from Dan anything that was outside of the scope of what he was there to do. Right. right. Um, right. And so I had to find what would work for Mashami. Yeah. And so March, 2004, four months before Olympic trials, I left the group and went to Trevor Graham and trained with Justin Gatlin, Suzanne Reed, yeah. Sean Crawford, yeah. some of the best. And Certainly. It was, it was in you, that You know what? Let me share this real quick, though. You keep saying yeah. some of the best, but some of the best also got to train with you. You were some of the best mm -hmm. also. Let, let's, let, let, let's make sure we don't lose that in this, in this um, very poetic way of your putting and being beautifully humble. But you're one of the best also. So it, it ain't it ain't like you just training with some of the best. Some of the best is getting to train with you also. Oh, wow. Well, I receive that. Yeah. I receive that because, you know, I, I look at my life as a journey of desire and reckless abandon toward a goal. I, I just I yeah. wasn't going to be denied. I, you know, right. Coach Rob talked about that mountain peak and I was able to take those lonely steps toward it because I That's understood right. it so young. That's right. And now even making the decision to go to a different coach. Um, yeah. And so I'll tell you guys, um, I actually ran that meet with a completely torn. I ran the Olympics and Olympic trials with a completely torn quadricep muscle. Mm. I tore that bad boy in May. Yeah. I did not know. Um, it was about four weeks out from trials that I came to a practice one Friday and I couldn't even walk. And I told Trevor, I said, I don't know what's wrong with me. Right. He says, I need you to go see this orthopedics um, and get the MRI done. I got an MRI done on Sunday. Um, I remember I was sleeping in my bed and I moved my leg in a way that I woke up crying. So, you know, yes, you're in pain yeah, gotta, if yeah. you wake up in tears, Certainly, right? Yeah. And I laid my hands on myself and I said, Lord, I don't care if I never run again or make the team. I need you to take this pain away. Right. I get up the next morning and look, I was so poor at the time. This is when gas had gone up and they were doing a free gas giveaway. And mm. I had rolled up $3 worth of pennies. Yeah. I, make this up. Yeah. I rolled up $3 worth of pennies and I went on a search for where they were giving this gas away yeah. at six o'clock before I had practice, had to meet at seven right. for weightlifting. Right. And so I get up, I'm going to the car, I drive, needless to say, didn't find the gas station. So I put my little $3 worth of gas in the tank because I took it with me just in case yeah. I didn't find it. Certainly. And it was when I'm turning the key to my condo that I realized I've been walking. 
Now, mind mm. you, I couldn't walk into any of that stuff. Yeah, before. yeah, yeah. So I go inside and I put my tennis shoes on and I go run for 15 minutes. Nice. I jump in the car, I drive to practice. I get, I get, I get going. I try to do drills. I couldn't really do the drills. Right. I tell Trevor, I said, Trevor, if I spike up, just train me. Yeah. You know, just, just train me. I put my spikes on the menu for the workout that day. I'll never forget. We had six, two hundreds with one minute's rest in 25 to 26 seconds. Cause it was go time. Yeah. So this is where, you know, close, this is the right. end of May. Yeah. 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 It's the end of May. It's time to go. Right. Um, I did all of the runs and my last one was in 25 seconds. Wow. Took my spikes off, tried to cool down. I couldn't do any of the drills again, but I just jogged down, went home, came back the Tuesday, said the same thing to the coach, did the workout. Trevor calls me to the stance with his assistance. He says, well, Shami, I need to talk to you. He says, well, what are you doing? Right. You couldn't walk on Friday. Now you're here. You're running these times. I said, okay, I'm going to just tell you. I said, I don't know how much you believe in God, but I do. I laid hands on myself Sunday when I woke up in pain and I've been doing this. Yeah. That same Tuesday, I'm sitting on my floor eating a spicy chicken sandwich from Wendy's mm -hmm. with my legs crossed. Yeah. Dr. Martini calls me because they've read the MRI. Right. Here's how the phone call starts. Okay, Moshami, we want to get you in tomorrow. We're going to go ahead and give you a cortisone shot because tomorrow was Wednesday. Yeah. He said, and we're going to go ahead and give you um, a physical therapy. You're going to come in from 8 to 12, five days a week. I mean, he's just going, going, going. Yeah, I thought yeah, I said, yeah. Dr. Martini, hold on. I said, what's wrong with me? He says, all right. He says, so Moshami, you have four quadricep muscles and you tore the main one and you ripped it from the bone. Mm. Yeah, okay. that's a lot to hear right there. Okay. You know what I mean? And 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 then to be able to hear that news and go on and continue to do everything that you accomplished that summer is amazing. They're, they're giving me the cue that we got to start to wrap up. But I, but I want to do this because I, I saw you brought right almost like show and tell. You know what I mean? And because I, I was going to ask. Where, 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 I was going to ask, where do you keep the gold medal? So, so well, let, yes, indeed. So right now, today, you keep it around your neck. Hold, hold it up, hold, hold it up for everybody a little bit here so we can see. That is beautiful. Hey, hey, look. And so, um, I, I have to start to wrap <laughs> us up, but, but, but I will share this as a, as sort of like an ending piece. Um, it's, it's been beautiful to get a chance to hear a part of your story. Um, the journey that, that you started on. I read somewhere, that you that you make a comment or that you've shared a comment about good choices lead to good things. And I and 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 so I say this because um the seven year old you who's sitting in a living room or someplace watching television sees Flojo on TV in 1988 and says, Okay, wow, you know what? That looks cool. It to, to, to whatever degree in your mind at seven years old can comprehend and like you know what I mean, but that looks cool. And and then you go on this journey almost unbeknownst to you with the help of dad and 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 then and, and then you get and then you meet these wonderful people along the way and that's what I talk about planting seeds right like all like all these seeds are natural seeds these aren't things that you had to plant yourself your dad takes you to a track meet at at cook recreation you know you go from sitting inside playing an instrument and and you go from third chair to first chair and you do all these wonderful things um your story has been inspiring you know what i mean um Beautiful to catch up to you. I'm glad you shared some time with us here today. I wish we could continue to go on. You know what I mean? Um, say, 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 say goodbye to everybody here in Columbus, and then, I, and, and, and then I'll do the outro, and, um, and, then, and then we'll get out of here. So I'll let you go ahead and say, and say your goodbyes for us. Yes, thank you so much to the seat of Columbus. I love you. I thank you. This is for you. It's because of you I'm able to have this. Thank you guys so much for having me. God bless each and every one of you. And bless the children. Dream big. Dream always. Keep pushing. God love bless Love it. You. Love it. Love it. Hey, look, people, you got a special treat today, Central High. This was a this was a good one. I want to thank you. Um, one of Brookhaven's baddest and best. And so uh, much respect to you. Be sure to catch future episodes of the show on WCBE 90.5 FM. Catch us on Spotify, Apple, wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. And follow us, everybody, on Instagram at City League Sports 614. I'm your host, Dr. Vince Clarino. That is the legendary feat of Moshami Robinson, folks. Appreciate you being on the show. And this is City League Sports.